Okay, so I'm trying to finalize everything for the, the products I'm going to be selling, uh, this new business venture of mine, and I'll make a separate video regarding the actual product design and kind of talking you through what's what the products are and, and why I've decided to, to do those, but the first the first step in that is to, to finalize the actual materials that I'm going to be using. In this case, it's basically just leather. I'll be using rivets as well, copper rivets, but I've never really found them to be any different between the manufacturers. I haven't really noticed a difference, so there's not much of a consideration there. Uh, but in terms of the leather, that's obviously a lot more complicated. I'd planned to make this video, I'd started filming this video uh, of me going around the leather shops in in Vilnius here, the city we live in, and Konis, which is the, the other city close to us. There's a lot of leather shops here, and that would have been a fun video, but of course we're back into a second lockdown here, so that's not an option just now. So what I had to do is to just order things online, I guess. It's, it's a lot more risky, but I don't really have a choice at the moment. So with that in mind, I, I went on to a few websites, I did some research, and the one I settled on is AA Crack and Sons in the UK. I like their selection, you can order six samples from them for free, so that's pretty cool. So that's what I did. Before going into this, I, I knew roughly what I wanted. So I wanted to have a, a pre-dyed leather. I'm not going to dye anything by hand this time, I, I want that all to be taken care of beforehand. So I want a pre-dyed leather that's kind of light in colour. I like to start with kind of lighter leathers because every kind of step in the process darkens them slightly, plus using them darkens them as they develop a patina. I want the thickness to be 1.8 millimeters, more or less. These are for camera straps. So, you know, stronger leathers, I don't want anything that's too soft. Yeah, I ordered six, six samples from them, still waiting on those getting here. So when they do, I'll test them and, and show you what happens. So I was in the middle of editing this video here and I realized I didn't actually talk about the leathers I ordered. I didn't actually mention what the six of them were. So I'll just take you through them here. So the first one is this Horween Derby. The color is natural and it says 1.6 to 1.8 millimeters. Then there's the Horween Essex, also natural. The Tempesti ones then. So we have, I'll try and, I don't know, these are Italian names. I don't know how to pronounce them. So it's the main Lissio ones and yeah, here's the two colors and these are both 1.8 to 2 millimeters. And the next one is this Walpier Botero. This color is natural. Again, this is a slightly thicker one, 2 to 2.2 mil. And the last one is also Walpier Botero. Uh, the color is Biscuit 03. So I got a delivery of pieces of leather, little swatches of leather. They're all similar thickness. They're all vegetable tan leathers. The colors are slightly different, but they're all quite pale leathers. So I'm gonna test them all. I'm gonna to try to burnish them, and see how they burnish. Every type of leather burnishes slightly differently. And I'll also try to stamp them. I only have old stamps with my old logo, but for the purpose of testing how they take the stamp, it's, it's fine. So burnish them, stamp them, and we'll see how they look.
So at this point I've burnished one side of every every piece of leather and I managed to get a pretty decent edge on on all of them. Some of them were much easier than others. Some of them are really stiff. Like this uh Welpier Botero. This one uh is really really stiff. So I, I didn't have to like it just with the burnishing tool was really really easy to put an edge on that. I have uh one of these Horween Darby um pieces and then the color is natural and it's really really soft. It's a bit more difficult because these are just one one piece. Um it is quite difficult to do it with the burnishing tool. It's really soft and it moves around a lot if you're trying to do it, it folds up on itself. So with ones like that it was harder. I had to lie them flat on a, on the surface and use a cloth to to burnish the edge. Not not a big deal, but something to consider. If it's for uh maybe bags or wallets, things like that, probably it's a really good option, but I think for straps, which is all I'm going to be making to start with, maybe this the Horween ones aren't aren't the best for that. Something a bit more sturdy and rigid. Maybe one of these uh the Tempesti ones. They were really good. They were somewhere in the middle. It wasn't really stiff. It's quite soft. Uh, but at the same time, it was really easy to burnish just with the tool. Uh, in terms of the stamp, they all took a stamp pretty well. Uh, it took me, again with the Horween one, I kind of messed it up the first time. I think the stamp was a little too hot. Um, so yeah, it looks okay in the end, but again, the Tempesti ones, it was really consistent, really even. It was really easy to stamp that one. And the the real stiff ones, the, the Botero one again, didn't take the stamp very well. I think I'd need to apply a bit more pressure on that, maybe using a, a proper press or something to get it pretty consistent. Um, the Tempesti ones have been my favorite so far. Okay, I just wanted to elaborate on something I said at the start of the video. So I mentioned I don't care too much about the copper rivets. They're kind of the same between all the manufacturers. And for the most part, that's true. At least any of the ones I've used, I haven't really noticed any difference in quality between them. But what you do find is that they all look slightly different. So just pay attention to what you're buying because some of them I really like and some of them I don't like so much. Uh, let me Let me show you what I mean. The first one, they're, well, they're all different colors to, to start with. I think you can kind of see that on the camera. They, yeah, they don't look exactly the same. So some of them are a bit duller, some of them are a bit shinier. The one on the left is just completely flat, completely smooth. There's no pattern or anything on there. The the middle one has, has a kind of a different pattern on it. It's a little strange, but I think it looks pretty cool. And I think my favorite one, though, is the, the one with the concentric circles on it there. Um... So that's just something to look out for if you're ordering your rivets. They won't all just be completely flat. Some of them will, will have slightly different designs on them. That's probably one of the only things you need to consider with the rivets. Yeah, just make sure you have the correct size and the length. I like to buy the longest ones I can. And then you need to cut them to length anyway. So for me, it makes sense to just buy the longest one to make sure I have enough material. Uh, okay, so that's that's probably the only thing in terms of rivets. And the the other thing I wanted to mention is that I ordered some... Uh, leather. I ordered one of the Tempesti hides. I really liked it. I'm pretty confident that uh, it'll be the one I use. But just to, to make sure, uh, the last part that I want to do is just make up some products with it and make sure that I'm actually happy with the, the leather. So yeah, once I, I have that and I'm happy with it, that'll be the, the last thing to consider. I'll have all my material sorted for this.
Right, so I I didn't film too much of that last part, but I I don't want to give too much away just yet. You know, it's not not a secret, but um, I'll save the actual products and uh, everything for a different video. So, but yeah, it's it's camera straps. I've I've made them up, and yeah, all of them are really cool, really cool. I like them. And this is a, the bigger one there as well. So. Really happy with that leather. I have no complaints about it whatsoever. I think it's unusual to get uh, a veg tan leather that's so thin, uh, that's this really good quality like that. Uh, most of the hides and stuff you buy are much thicker. This is 1.8 millimeters, which is like between four, four to five ounce leather. So it's not so common to get real nice hides uh, with that thickness. So really happy with this and that's it. I've I've made my mind up. This is going to be the the one. I'll probably offer different leathers down the road and um, yeah, buy buy some kind of specialty ones and do you know uh, limited runs and stuff. But I really like I really like this leather and I think it's a great one to to just be the the kind of core for for the straps. In the next video, I'll describe the kind of products themselves and and go into a bit more of the design side of it and and why why I made the decisions I did that's all for today I'll see you in the next video